I have for you, Mac, is um so for for 318, it's gonna be they're gonna be testing the persistent entity streaming. After that, they're gonna look into after a success that being successful, they're gonna look into doing some static um server meshing. And um once that is out of the way, once that's complete and that's successful, let's say they finish it by the end of this year, 2022. What do you think Star Citizen will look like? By the end of 2023. So, my understanding of server meshing is you not the idea of a one of a player sitting on one server all the time is not uh, the reality with server meshing. Mm -hmm. As the player moves through the universe and he encounters other objects, other players. And as, as more compute is required to run that area and to pull more stuff from the database, it pulls in more and more servers. So really, it's not a player on a on a server. It's a player on a grid. And the servers move in and off of the grid to support what's going on on that grid. So right. you could think of Stanton as a heat map. And we're like, say there's 100 players gathered around um Bahini Point. You're gonna see a lot of servers being pulled into Bahini Point to keep, you know, they're gonna be spinning up these containers and dropping them on Bahini Point to keep that uh mesh running there, keep mm -hmm. the persistent streaming running mm -hmm. and working. And at the player leaves that area then you know he may be only moving along through area where one server is only required to, to maintain it until he gets to another hotspot or if those hundred players migrate then those servers are going to follow them around so that's my understanding of how server meshing works it's, it's kind of similar to what eve online uses right uh, and uh, so with that possibility uh that's that's finally going to eliminate the bottleneck i think they, they've had this mm -hmm. big bottleneck of bringing in the other gameplay loops and the things mm -hmm. in the game because one, they needed a database that was able to handle that stuff mm -hmm. and keep it persistent and a server setup that would handle all these players moving in and out and a larger player count in an area. So they're going to have those too. So that's like the foundations of the building, you could say, you know, that that's your foundation. Mm -hmm. Now that you have the foundations in place, you can start working on these other gameplay loops. You can start working on exploration, scanning. Yeah. Um, you can start working on uh, larger, more complex FPS type missions. You can start having uh, sh NPC AI ships flying around on planets and soldiers running around. And because um, you're not going to be overloading that single server anymore now when right. you know if the ai flies in and drops 20 troops on the ground to fight you it just pulls in a couple more servers to support that right and uh so i'm hoping to see expanded fps missions you know, where you actually have a reason to use your vehicles you may yes. have to fight your way through a cave system with the vehicles and come out the other side and then have to assault a mountainside or something and fight your way through all the fortifications and into a base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then fight your way down through the base to a console and get the information of the next location you need to go to, which is a, a Polaris out in space somewhere and right. that you have to go and, and, and destroy or, or actually attack and take it over. And, you know, that's how you complete the mission, you know, right. stuff like that. Expanded FPS stuff. Uh, uh, I think that they could do a lot with exploration, uh, yes. especially you know they were talking about uh, wormhole scanning, or, right? And and I, I you know I, I'm con I'm one of those people that sit around and think of the possibilities, you know. Right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking you could you could have it where you could get missions and you could scan down a wormhole, and you pass through the wormhole into this other space right. wormhole space if you will and you can go in there and exploit that and get missions and maybe the wormholes collapse after a while or they move so kind of like mm. in eve online where you're in the wormhole right. space and the entrance to it closes and it might appear and reappear in pyro so you don't have to come back out through pyro to get back to stanton or to whatever other right. system 
you know, things like that. You know, uh, I, I could come up with a whole bunch of stuff. And so that's, I, I'm hoping that they're going to come out, you know, start focusing on the other gameplay loops yes. and, you know, more complex scanning, you know, like scanning a system and you have to scan things down to locate them. It's like a mini game. I'd like to see a lot more mini games. Um, and I think too, uh, it might help, you know, they can finally flush out the damage control on the ships. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in the middle of a fight, your shields go down, you know, and somebody r runs back and they open up the shield uh, generator and, you know, some components are destroyed. They got to yank the components out and they stick new ones in and then they have a hand scanner that they use to calibrate them and the shield comes back online and, you know, mm -hmm. they can work from one system to another troubleshooting and fixing stuff like that. That would, that would be awesome. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff like that. The trade thing, the trade parts of it, they're going to have to really work on the economy. I think for the trade, because like, True. like pyro, right? So why would I want to go to pyro? If I'm, if, you know, I'm going to go there and explore a little bit, but it has to be something there for me to exploit. And if there's no reason as a for a trader or a miner to go there and and do those things, then you know it's going to going to be a replay of the gameplay again. So I think they need to come up with the economy. They need to get the other materials important and the manufacture of other things. So I think they need right. to start looking at player crafting. I would like to see player some player crafting, crafting coming okay. into it. You know, and, I, and then, you know, along with player crafting, you know, personal bases. You could have a personal base with a store on it, you know, and you sell your goods right. out of and stuff like that. And with the persistence, this thing where, you know, I like to live off my ship. I can park myself in a safe spot in Pyro and my ship will be persistent. My stuff on it will be persistent. And, you right. know, they're talking about using AI blades for your turrets. And right. so when I'm logged off, the ship stays there because it's a persistent universe, right? So right. the ship doesn't disappear. It sits there in space. And the AI blades defend it if somebody shows up to shoot at it. Right. And right. You, can, you can extend that concept to orgs. So maybe you've right. got 30 people in your org. And you've got this one spot in space where you like to hang out. So now you've got this spot in space where at any one time you've got four Odysseys, three Carracks, Polaris's, maybe an Idris sitting right. there. And if somebody comes along and they want to attack that, you know, they have to fight all those AI blades. You know, you got you got what 30 or 40 size three and four repeaters shooting at you right. <laughs> to right. try and take that take those out, get in there and attack those ships and get what's on them. And mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to see, you might see organi organizations having their own player communities actually in space. Yeah. And you could go there and trade with them and stuff like that. I, you know, so I, I envision all this stuff, you know, and it, of course it has nothing to do with reality because nothing's set in stone. It all True. depends on how persistent streaming plays out. I think if, yeah. if they do the persistent streaming and it comes out really well, mm. then we can get really excited because then server meshing should be fairly straightforward. Right. After that. Right. Man, Sorry. I kind of kind of went off down a rabbit hole no, on no, your no, wormhole on you there. This is this is perfect, man. This this a lot of the stuff you're saying is is what i want the game to look like you know it's 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 a lot of the stuff that i think i pledge for you know that that kind of thing where i want to be able to live out on my ship i want to be able to use you know a parasite ship within a a, a larger vessel or a carrier and then the whole idea of staying out in certain areas of space or um finding an asteroid field somewhere and deciding to set set that up as a base within within space is is is, is pretty cool to be able to hide out over there and the ability to you know build their own bases planet side somewhere you know somewhere in a far distant system somewhere and the sure. idea you know the idea of trading the idea of of 
the wormhole idea I really love that you mentioned, the fact that it could actually close up on you if you take too long, you know, and then you have to go through another path to actually end up in maybe a more dangerous system that you have to go through. Just the adventure of going through that is is the game. You know, I think it's it's it makes things, you know, imagine you do that, you get stuck there by yourself and your whole org needs to now come and find you. <laughs> you know, that right. whole mechanic, you know, and you have limited resources. You know, that whole mechanic right. will make things so much interesting. Like every time you log in, it'll be a new story. It'll be an interesting story. And I, I think those are the things I'm really excited for, you know. And wormholes could be dangerous too. I mean, you you right. just go out there, you scan down this wormhole, you find this wormhole, and you're like, awesome, I found a wormhole. Mm -hmm. You get in there, and as soon as you come out the other end of the wormhole, you're looking at a a, a gate camp, basically, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, they've already been there, and they're waiting for you for people to come through that hole, right. and uh, they you just get vaporized almost instantly, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be the risk, the risk and reward, you know, the, the idea of wormholes. I think wormholes should take you to very lucrative areas and there's a risk of running into, you know, heavily NPC populated areas and also heavily, in, you know, players or pirate populated areas where, you know, they, they could trap you, you know, and I think it's real realistic and I think people need to make decisions. People need to think about the moves that they make in the game you can't just go <laughs> you know you need to plan your right. trip so the rewards are going to have to be both physical and intellectual you're going to have mm -hmm. to physically you know they be able to go there and get cool gear or cool materials to be able to sell and make uac on with and then intellectually like exploration you know you mm -hmm. get to go there you deploy your probes map out the planets and the asteroid fields and then mm -hmm. be able to take that data and sell it right right you know right 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 i agree i agree that like that's one of the things i like about um elite dangerous the fact that you can sell your cartography information is awesome yeah it's, yep. uh, it's really cool all right um hold on so in a box and has a question here's a question i will discuss uh, that will... alien conflicts the idea of alien conflicts was also will also play into factor you know, I think with, with hopefully once server meshing is out, then they, they, they can start introducing Bandul in certain systems and, you know, maybe um, the Banu and, you know, Tavarin to be able to also see alien races within the game will also be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you could have frontier systems where a part of the system is owned by the Vandu and mm -hmm. there's active fighting going on. And you could go to that system with uh, your org or by yourself or whatever and get missions to go into that hostile space and destroy Vandir or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then also combining that with the wormhole ideas, you could have missions where an org would take on this mission from the UEE Navy mm -hmm. to go to this area you, they would have to scan down a wor this wormhole that's available because they have the mission. And mm -hmm. then once they pass through it, they pass into a system. And this system, their their mission, you have whatever the mission parameters are for the campaign, uh, whether it's you have to secure all the planets or destroy all the spacecraft, you know, all the space stations or whatever, or mm -hmm. combinations thereof. And when you pass through the wormhole, it's a one-way trip. You got to take everybody with you, all your ships that you're going to use, all the vehicles you're going to use, all the guns and ammo and fuel and equipment and food. You got to take mm -hmm. all that with you. And you start the game, you start playing this campaign from one mission to the next. And as you complete a mission, right. you get rewards for it and stuff. But if you mm. fail a mission, the campaign is over. And that's mm. it. And you fail and you're back in regular space again with whatever you had. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Man, it's exciting stuff, man. It's exciting stuff. The potential that this game offers is... is you can't get that anywhere else you know the way they're the way they're building the foundation of it it, it just it opens it, things up for them to, for for many possibilities you know so we'll, we'll see we'll see what they what we get in the next uh couple of years i'm, I'm really excited about it 